Autumn arrives. 1970 Fall Fest, the poster reads. Found in Help Wanted 2, this implies that the Fall Fest was an ongoing event that occurred much longer than we initially suspected. What events need to happen to lead up to the events of Fall Fest 83, and what future events might it affect? I'm here with Mamakado, who is also a FNAF theorist, and we actually made a sister video to this one on her channel about the daycare attendant and the marionette. Hi, thanks for having me on your channel. Writing these theories with you has been really fun, and I hope everyone watching likes them just as much as I do. There's a link to our other theory collab video in the description as well as in the card in the top right corner of the video. You should seriously go check it out, Mamakado did like 99% of the writing on both videos, I can't even lie. If you're here from Mamakado's channel, welcome, I'm happy you're here and I hope you like the video. Let's get started. You may recall the Curse of Dreadbear DLC from Help Wanted 1 was set in Fall Fest 1983. It's unclear whether Fall Fest began with Halloween theming at night or slowly came to incorporate it over time. They certainly were capitalizing on the holiday by 83. At night, they'd bring out the Halloween decor and shift the preppy autumn celebration into something a bit spookier, probably aimed at teens and young adults. Perhaps turning a rundown barn into a haunted house-style escape room with the animatronics chained in place to jump at guests and creep them out, a la FNAF AR's Dark Circus DLC. In fact, the area Dark Circus takes place in looks incredibly similar to the barn from Curse of the Red Bear, and the walls and decorations are hung from the rafters with chains. They're very temporary decorations. When looking out the front windows of the barn, one can see circus tents and other attractions set up outside. Notably, the full name of the Dark Circus DLC is Dark Circus Encore. Even the marketing seems to align with the idea that this is Fazbear once again trying to make light of their past. This poster has new animatronics on it, says Encore Encore at the top, and Await Your Return at the bottom. While this poster is torn up and looks much older, sporting the original animatronics and no Encore verbiage this time. It wouldn't be too much of a stretch to say Dark Circus is at least modeled after past Fall Fests, especially considering how much of a fire hazard it appears to be. This becomes relevant when you realize that, in 1983, Fall Fest caught fire. The fire began in the barn and spread from there. We could see this during the Cinder Carousel minigame Help Wanted 2. Horoscope shows this off on his channel in the video What FNAF Help Wanted 2 Hides in the Carousel and Arts and Crafts Daycare. He points out that you can clearly see the fire spread from the barn. Interestingly, the daycare attendant appears in this level. If you want to find out more about how he might be connected to all this, go check out the video we made on Mamakato's channel. It's also in Horoscope's look at the surrounding area that you can see several of the same set pieces from Curse of Dreadbear. It also makes sense that, if it burned down, that would be the year they stopped doing the festival. These set pieces can also be seen in Fazer Blast FNAF 2 level, which also catches fire. Not a single part of FNAF's lore is theorized more about than its timeline. Which child got killed, at what location, who killed them, and why? Most people have their own idea of the series' order of events and there are as many versions of the timeline as there are people trying to put it together. What we're asking though, is what implications Fall Fest might have on the timeline, what events need to happen to lead up to the events of Fall Fest 83, and what future events might it affect. With probably the most important piece of the puzzle is the marionette, so let's dig into that. We'll start with the game that sparked this whole train of thought for us, Help Wanted 2. It's rare to have anything in this franchise outright confirmed, but Princess Quest Alpha's Gravestone Doll Order is about as close as we can get. The gravestones all have a specific dead child they represent, along with braziers that can be ignited in any order. You probably already know that only a specific order will unlock the Bonnie Mask chest. First is Chica, then Foxy, Freddy, Bonnie, Golden Freddy, and last but not least, the Marionette. Some people disagree, saying the gravestone order is simply when the souls are released. But instead of discussing that here, I encourage you to watch my dedicated video about Help on a Two's Gravestones, which I'll link in the description. If we are going with the idea that the crying child was first, followed by the MCI, and finally Charlotte, that means every single one of these deaths happened in 1983. We already know that the bite victim died from the infamous bite of 83. We also know that the latest year that Charlie could have been alive was 83 for a few reasons. Not only do the novels show Charlie dying in 1983, but promotional material for Fall Fest shows the puppet with the characteristic tear streaks. These tear streaks only appear once the puppet is possessed, and we know that the Fall Fest burned in 1983. If we assume that the Golden Freddy gravestone is talking about Cassidy, and not the bite victim, which would make sense, as the crying child's grave isn't present in the lorekeeper ending of Pizzeria Simulator, then we have our order. 
and because the FNAF 2 phone calls mention an old yellow suit in the back room being used, the crying child has to die before the missing children. Otherwise, the spring bonnie suit wouldn't have been moved to the back room of a Freddy's location for William to use to lure the kids. We can put together, then, that the children's order of deaths is the crying child first, but Susie being William's first victim. This is backed up by Chica's line in Ultimate Custom Night, saying, I was the first. I have seen everything. You may question how phone calls from 1987 can be used as evidence for a crime committed in 1983, but I counter that these phone calls are unstuck in time. The allusion to a summer job in November indicates that these recordings are from another time. This is just one more attempted opening of a franchise that the public associates with death. The calls were likely recycled by higher ups as training tapes for new security guards, as they go over using the Freddy mask and how to wind up the music box. What implications does this have? Well, I'm glad you asked. Remember that Fazer Blast game I mentioned earlier? We believe the puppet was a key player in starting the Fall Fest fire, and the evidence is staring us in the face. Without the puppet, there would be no fire even with everything we put in place for it. It's the puppet restraining Dreadbear's arm that causes the animatronic to spark and break, igniting the dry wood and hay and eventually consuming the entire attraction. It's important to note that between seeing the graves in Princess Quest and the tear streaks on the Fall Fest promos, that by this point, the crying child, the MCI children, and Charlie have all died. This means that by the end of 1983, Fazbear has lost the Fredbear location, most of Fall Fest, excluding like the puppet and the daycare attendant. If you want to hear more about the puppet and the daycare attendant, you can go watch the sister video to this one, which is on my channel. And at least one pizzeria is being investigated due to children disappearing. Is the stage set for a new contender in children's entertainment? Is it possible someone might use some of the carnival and circus-themed characters to try to open another related company under the Fazbear Enterprises umbrella? Wrong. Gas leak. They ended up just trying to reopen their Freddy's location after enough of that bad press had died down, but it wasn't as successful as they'd hoped. As for what comes next? Well, if I went any farther, I'd have to call this a proper timeline video, and I'm not ready for that. This video is mainly about Fall Fest and the Dark Circus and all that. Oh, and before anyone goes to argue about the difference between circuses and carnivals, the Traveling Carnival wiki states that a lot of carnivals have circus-esque and or clown theming. Anyway, thanks for coming on the channel, Mamakado. Making these videos with you has been a blast. Anytime. You guys can find me over on the Mamakado YouTube channel, and if you want him to invite me back, go ahead and let him know in the comments down below. Bye!